Hello, church. Welcome to this week's message. My name is Henry Loke. This is God's Feeding Station. It's an honor to be with you again this week as we continue in our series in Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 3, verses 1 through 7 today. Uh, it should be obvious by now that the point that God is trying to get across through Isaiah is that Israel has relied on themselves. They've relied on the wisdom of man rather than the wisdom of God. And that's what's gotten them into trouble. And now they've gone down the road to idolatry and disobedience and covetousness and all these sins that now God is bringing judgment on Israel for. And so the thing we have to remember, what do we take away from this? Because God is speaking to us through this. There are so many things in here that relate to what's happening to us as a nation here in the United States and many other nations across the country. And again, this isn't a political discussion. Politics comes up because it's involved. But the result of what's happening is, uh, or, or what's happening is a result of what we're doing as a people, our unbelief, our disobedience, our sin. And so man is frail. He's a whisper. He's a mist. Here one day, gone the next. Why, why do we rely on that? Why did Israel rely on that? And the reliance of men and the things of men and false gods and false teachings, the result is disastrous. And you're going to see it as time plays out. So chapter 3 is now this oracle of judgment that's coming on Judah and Jerusalem. And, and now what God is going to do is all these creature comforts, all these things of the world that Israel has brought in and used to make them feel them make themselves feel secure. God's going to take all of that away. And all those great men that the nation relied upon are going to be taken away. They're going to be taken captive or they're going to be killed. And instead of realizing the glory for which Israel, Israel was created, it's going to lead, all of this is leading in the opposite direction. And the nation's going to be destroyed. It's heading towards disillusionment. Um, not disillusion, uh, dissolution, right? Dissolution. The nation is no longer going to exist. And this is the state of any nation that relies on itself rather than God. It's chaos. And the, its weak leaders reflect the attitude of the people that allow this to happen, that allow their leaders to go down these different ways, right? You've seen it with Israel. Israel has just allowed its kings to go the way of the wind. Some kings were very close to God, very faithful, very obedient, bringing back the word. Other kings led the nation into idolatry and the nation just went along with it. And so the nation's leaders then and now reflect the attitude and the strength or weakness of its people. So chapter one, for behold, the Lord God, of, sorry, the Lord God of hosts is taking away from Jerusalem and from Judah support and supply all support of bread and all support of water. If you know the story, you know that when she is surrounded, it is a severe famine. But Israel's being warned. Behold, there's a warning coming. When you see that in the ancient language, it usually means it's a threat. It's a threat of something coming. And it's coming from Almighty God, the rightful leader, the rightful sovereign of all nations. God, not man, holds the fate of nations in his hands. And we've seen it over and over and over again. We see it in through history, and we see it now. Man who tries in his own strength to lead, except for a few, right? Except for a few, it leads to disaster. And it may not be immediate disaster. It may be a long march toward something that is detriment to the nation. 
detrimental to the nation. And so God is saying, behold, listen up. I'm telling you, there's a warning. Judgment is coming. Everything political and physical is going to be taken away. Judgment is coming like a hurricane. And Israel's destruction is going to be complete. Can't talk today. So, continuing chapter, uh, chapter 3, verses 2 and 3. The mighty man and the soldier, the judge and the prophet, the diviner and the elder, the captain of 50 and the man of rank, the counselor and the skillful magician and the expert in charms. Right? What he's saying here is everything and everyone must go. The land must be cleansed. And he, he told them this would happen. I don't have the scripture in front of me, but if you go back to probably Deuteronomy or Leviticus, most likely Deuteronomy, he says, the land will vomit you out should you go down this road. And so God is going to take away the military leaders, the politicians, religious leaders, craftsmen, judges, lawyers, all of it. They're all going to go. Anyone that is honorable, anybody that is perceived to have any strength, anyone that Nebuchadnezzar and Babylon, in this case, thinks could lead the nation in rebellion. They're going. And this is exactly what happened when Assyria came to the northern kingdom and when Babylon came to Judah. This is exactly what happened. In referencing Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon, 2 Kings 24, 14 says, He, Nebuchadnezzar, carried away all Jerusalem and all the officials and all the mighty men of valor, 10,000 captives and all the craftsmen and all the smiths. None remained except the poorest people of the land. What Assyria and Babylon did and practiced was what we call now replacement theory, right? That's the, that's the buzzword these days. What they would do is they would take everybody out but the poorest of the land and then they would bring in peoples from the other lands that they conquered who weren't a threat, who didn't have the culture, who didn't have the religious background, who didn't have any any interest in, in keeping what the nation they just conquered, any of those customs. They had no national history with the land that they were being brought into. And so anything of that nation, any remnant of that nation was gone because the people living there weren't from there. And I know people don't like to hear this, but you see some of that happening now, whether it's happening on purpose or not, I have no idea. Don't know the hearts of the men in power at the moment. But you see this happening with open borders. Now, what's the purpose behind it? Like I said, no idea. Right? People don't like the replacement theory thing. But you see these types of things happening in the world today. Okay? And so you have to ask why. You have to just look at it and see it and recognize that it's happened before. And again, the power of a nation is going to reflect the strength and the faith of the people in that nation. So because Israel relied on herself rather than God, everything that she needs for survival is going to be taken away from her. And then, maybe, she'll turn back and start to rely on God again. So, verses 4 and 5. I will make boys their princes, and infants shall rule over them. And the people will oppress one another, everyone his fellow and everyone his neighbor. The youth will be insolent to the elder, and the despised to the honorable. Right? Disasters the result. It was then, it is now. Judah will, be, will go from being ruled by wise men and, and men qualified 
in some sense, um, to rule her. She's now going to be ruled by children, figuratively speaking, right? Childish men, incompetent men, immature, lacking understanding, lacking any leadership ability. That is who is now going to rule over her. Men unfit to rule. And graft and bribery and, and self-service and irresponsibility are going to be the nature of the beast. Neighbor's going to oppress neighbor. There's going to be nobody to stop them. No law, no courts, no consequences. Children will disrespect their elders, their teachers, their parents. <clears throat> they will become out of control. Excuse me. And the result is anarchy. Again, are we seeing this today? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. I just saw there was a, a case where a, a little child was stabbed by a woman who was released just days before for another crime. There are no consequences. Shoplifters, look at the fights that are going on in schools. There's videos all over the internet. Mobs running the streets. No consequences. Laws being passed that says, well, you can shoplift. You know, anything stolen under this amount, we're not going to prosecute. What? Since when is stealing not stealing? What the heck is going on? History rhymes, right? Some people don't say it likes to repeat itself. I don't know. Looks like it's repeating itself to me. But at the very least, it rhymes with all things that have come before. And again, this isn't a comment on, on, on who's ruling or governing or whatever. This is a comment on a lack of faith and obedience to God. That is what brings this about. doesn't matter who's in power. It matters what we as the people of the nation are doing, who we are listening to, who do we have faith in, who are we obeying, who are we not obeying, how are we living, The nation goes by the way of the faith of its people. That's what this is about. So when, when people think they can rule in their own right by their own strength, this is what you get. It's happened all throughout history. Present time is no different. This is what we have now. And do you think this is happening by, by, by accident, what's happening today? Do you think it's by chance? I don't. And it's not. It's Satan's plan. You've got to drill down and get, get to the, 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 the root of the matter, Ephesians 6. Right? What's happening now is a spiritual battle. It was then and it is now. So what's going on is of the evil one. Plain and simple. Last two verses. For a man will take hold of his brother in the house of his father, saying, You have a cloak. You shall be our leader. And this heap of ruins shall be under your rule. And that day he will speak out, saying, I will not be a healer. In my house there is neither bread nor cloak. You shall not make me leader of this people. Right? Israel is going to be ruled by nobodies. The nation is so deprived of leadership and so poor that if you own a coat, you're, you're going to be eligible to be elected and put in power. Owning, owning a cloak will set you out from the crowd. But here's the question. What's, what's going to be left to rule? What's left? Nothing. Nothing but a garbage heap. Right? Unlike those who thought they could do anything in their own strength, they believed in anything, believed in themselves, elevated themselves. Unlike them now, this guy, right, this owner of the coat, who has gone through and suffered through the devastation of seeing his nation plowed under, he's gone, I don't want anything to do with this. Right? He fears he can do nothing. And what can he do? He can't. He says, I can't heal. 
I can't feed you. I can't clothe you. I can't keep the peace. I can't judge. There are no courts. There are no lawyers. Who wants to rule over that? Right? Who wants that job? No thanks. I mean, it's so bad that the guy with the coat gets the responsibility of leading. And he says, not having it. I'm, I can't do it. Can't do it. So Israel goes from a time where the mantle of leadership is sought after, fought after, goes from that to a time where all that is left to rule over is a garbage heap. And I'm afraid we're on the same path, folks. I, God didn't bring us to Isaiah in this time for no reason, purely by chance. I think we're on the same path. And I, 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 I think we're being warned, but I have no idea where it's going. God is God, and he will not be mocked, and he will not put up with these types of things forever. The warnings are here. They are here and now. They have been here for anyone who's had ears to hear, anyone who's been reading the word, these warnings have been coming out and I've been talking to them not as directly and not as much in the past, but we're here at this point in time and in the book of Isaiah for a reason. So are we going to heed the warnings? Now, the, cool, the good news is, excuse me, we have a God who's waiting for us to turn and repent, right? Just like he would have set Israel straight back on the path, had they turned, he, he'll, do, he'll do the same for us if we would turn and acknowledge him again and be obedient to him and be the Christian nation that and, and, and follow the Christian principles that this nation was founded on. If we would do that, the ship could be righted. It's not going to be, it's not going to be righted by any politician. I keep saying that. So, do we, will we learn the lessons of history or will we make the same mistakes? <laughs> 